this is the story, the fantastically true story, of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. Working within the Communist Party places a counter-spy in constant jeopardy. In just a moment, you will see its effect on the family of one such counter-spy. Shall I put it on the account? Oh, I'll, uh, I'll pay now. In full. In full? That was only half a kiss. Well, it was only half a cup. your daddy with a mouthful of toothpaste. It's Constance's fault. She made me brush my teeth. Well, don't you worry. If you can't kiss me, I can kiss you. There. Oh, Daddy, did you know that this was your... Sandra, my little sister, don't you think you'd better go finish brushing your teeth? I just did. Didn't I know what, honey? Uh, you'd better let your daddy go, sweetheart. Goodbye, darling. Bye. Take good care of your mother now. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Daddy. Bye-bye. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Daddy. Bye. Bye. Sandra, you almost told it. I did not. Yes, you did. Didn't she, Mother? Well... <laughs> I didn't at all. I wasn't going to tell Daddy that it was his birthday. And let's not forget that it's a school day for little girls. And Sandra has to rinse her mouth and comb her hair. Mother, doesn't Daddy know it's his birthday? Oh, he may, or he may have forgotten it. The important thing is that he thinks we have forgotten it. Then we can surprise him. Now, you children run on upstairs and get ready for school. Oh, Mother, couldn't we just stay home on Daddy's birthday? No, no, no. Sorry, must go. I want to call Francis Silver. Oh, Mother, can I talk to him? Me too. I suppose so, but it'll have to be very short. You must be off to school. Hello, Dad. This is Eva. Hello there. How's my lovely daughter-in-law and my beautiful grandchildren? Excitement is rampant in our house today. I can imagine. The youngsters want to say a quick hello, and then they must be off to school. Hello, Grandpa. Today is Daddy's birthday, and we have to wrap his present. And Mother has to bake a cake, and... Just a minute, Grandpa. Sandra wants to say hello. Hello, Grandpa. Hello there, sweetheart, and how are you? Hello, Grandpa. Sandra, can't you say anything besides hello, Grandpa? Goodbye, Grandpa. <laughs> That's enough. Go on up and hurry. Hello, Dad. I wonder, on your way over, if you could pick up some groceries. Save me from going out. 
Of course, Eva. What can I bring you? Oh, just a few things I didn't want to get while Herb was around. Let me think a minute. Oh, yes. Some candles. Mm-hmm. Dad, you're an angel. I feel more like a stevedore. Did you move the kitchen out to the front porch? Just getting a little suntan. How about Herb, Eva? Does uh, he suspect we're going to all this trouble just for him? I think so. Hey, you always were a smart lad. Getting the bride layout's finally finished. No good. I've been waiting for those. By the way, Mr. Philbrick, do you know what day this is? No. It's Thursday. I can't think of any other day. It's the day the Advertising Trade Journal presents the award for the best planned campaign of the year. Well, what's that got to do with me? You won it. The dinner is at 7 o'clock, and you will probably be the hero of the occasion. Hey, that's right. That's right. Oh, golly. I can't go. I just thought of something. Well, why not? Well, today's my birthday. Even the kids are planning some kind of celebration for me. I don't know. Sure, that's why Sandra was shut up so suddenly this morning. That's why Eva was so anxious for me to get home to dinner. What happens to the trade journal banquet? I don't know. I'll have to think of something. All I know is nothing in the world is important enough to keep me away from those kids tonight. I enjoyed that cake looks good. And that icing. Mm -hmm. I'd like to put in a bit to lick the dish. I'll take your application, Dad. But I'm afraid you're going to finish low on the list. I'll get it. Hello. Oh, hello, Herb. I was just going to call you. You're coming home, aren't you? I'm sure I'll make it home, darling. Yeah, well, it's a quarter of five now. I... Well, I, I do have just one stop to make on the way home. I should be there by 6.30. Fine. Bye-bye. <laughs> Are you leaving, Mr. Philbert? Yeah. What will I tell the presentation committee? Oh, golly. Tell them Mrs. Philbrick and I will drop over later. Oh, oh um, happy birthday, Mr. Philbrick. Thank you. That's Comrade Emmerich in your car, Philbrick. Something important is in the wind when he shows up. For me, comrade, or just resting? Both. There's a card in the glove compartment with a telephone number on it. Call that number from a public booth at 5 o'clock sharp. I'm sorry, you look exactly like my friend's card. I'm really a little embarrassed. Oh, that's quite all right. You can disappoint Eva, the kids, and the advertising trade journal, Philbrick, but not the Communist Party. When the whip snaps, the puppets jump, or else. Nichols, please. He's in room 530. 530. I think you'll find Mr. Nichols in room 318. Uh, but he isn't in at the present. Thanks. I'll try again. You're welcome. This is Henderson. Will you set up room 318, the Rosen Hotel, for a contact with Philbrick, 530? you choose the public phone, Philbrick. Yes? What are my instructions? What is the number of the phone from which you made this call? I'm in a public phone booth. The number is Carver 10010. Stay there until you receive four calls. When your phone rings, answer it and say hello. 
How long will that take? What's the difference? Stay there. If you hear two metallic taps on the mouthpiece of the phone from which you are being called, give the party this address. 224 Ilona Avenue. Then hang up. Ten minutes after you receive your last call, call back here for further instructions. Now, do not leave the booth until all the calls are completed and make no calls to anyone. You will be watched. This means you're going to be late getting home, you'll miss the surprise party, and you don't dare call home to explain. Dressed up for my fella. Where are the children? Upstairs, primping. They'll be down soon. Well, everything's ready at last. All we have to do now is wait for the cause of all this commotion, namely your son. He's late now. I'm sure he's all right, Dad. He'll be along any minute. There he is now. He got off at the third floor. But how are you going to get up there, Philbrick? you'll get the final call. Hotel to use a phone. There's plenty of pay stations near his office. I've also been wondering about that. Well, let's see what happened. I'm checking. Call me in 15 minutes. Well, I can't stay in this phone booth any longer. It's in the lobby of a hotel. The, the desk clerk is getting suspicious. Take a walk. Be back in the booth in 15 minutes. Then call me. That's a break. Get up to Henderson on the double. The FBI will still have time to attend that meeting. about 
Fletcher, huh? What happened? Top secret meeting, probably tonight. 224 Alona Avenue. Party brass only. They're using me as a telephone contact. They're watching you, of course. Yeah, I suppose they are, but I had to take that chance. I wanted to see about another matter anyway. We have a company. What do we do? Operation safety. Mr. Philbrick, I checked through your brochure. Ah. Oh, Mr. Emmerich. What are you doing here? And who is this man? Uh, Mr. Nichols, this is Mr. Emmerich. How do you do? How do you do? I want to know what's going on here. Well, Mr. Nichols and I were discussing a business matter. I wonder if you'd excuse us, Mr. Nichols. We can talk more about that matter later. Surely. Bye. I'll call you. Let's go downstairs. gentlemen, that I'm an advertising man. I'm faced with the necessity of making a living. I'd also remind you that your manners are in need of substantial overhauling. What do you mean? I've been working on Mr. Nichols for four months trying to sell him an advertising campaign. Now you two come along with your ridiculous suspicions and your, your rudeness, and you've probably blown the whole thing sky high. Why did you come over here to make your call? I was told to use any public phone. I had an appointment with Nichols. I thought I could fit the two together. What does this campaign consist of? Recommendations for advertising. 20 back page ads in national magazines, 200 radio and television spots, a 20 page brochure to every member of the trade. Now, if you have any more questions, I'd suggest you hurry. I've got to be back in that phone booth in three minutes. It's party business and nothing is going to interfere, if you know what I mean. Oh, Mr. Philbrick. You gentlemen, excuse me. The hotel clerk told me I'd find you out here. Say my mailing this to you. I received a long-distance telephone call. I'll have to leave tomorrow morning. I like the center up here very much. Will you drop a contract on a basis of our conversation, mail it to my office in the morning? I sure will, Mr. Nichols, and thanks a thousand times. It's my pleasure. Hope you gentlemen, excuse me for interrupting. Now, I've got to get to that phone booth. If you'll excuse me. Of course, comrade. Come on. Americans Valentine with you? They are? You are to come to the headquarters immediately. They will accompany you. Now, wait a minute. My kids are giving me a surprise birthday party tonight, and I intend to be there. Your instructions are to come to headquarters at once. But can't... <laughs> Shall we go, comrade? Sake, what's the idea of standing out here in the rain in your underwear? <laughs> well, youngsters, I guess we'll have to give Daddy up as a bad job and go to bed. But, Mother, Daddy hasn't seen our new dresses. We never see Daddy anymore. He won't even come home when we're giving him a party. All of our friends' daddies come home. Now, let's not be too hard on Daddy. He has things to do that we don't understand. I don't think I'll give him his present. I think we're getting sleepy time. Now, kiss Grandpa goodnight and let's go upstairs and go to bed. Good night, Grandpa. Good night, dear. Come along, sweetheart. Now, you run on upstairs and don't forget your prayers. Yes, Mother. Come on, Daddy.
don't think it's sharing your optimism either, but frankly, I'm worried. Oh, nonsense. Dad, there's nothing to worry about. How do you know? One minute he's coming home for dinner, then he doesn't show up for hours. Where is he? Does he have an accident? Should we call the police? Certainly not, Dad. I tell you, Herb's all right. Some business activity has prevented him from coming home. You have a telephone. Why doesn't he call? Sometimes he, he just doesn't have the opportunity. I tell you, Herb's all right. Dad, why don't you run on home and get a good night's sleep? And please don't worry about her. I tell you, he's all right. Well, I wish I had your confidence, my dear. Good night. Good night, Dad. And when he comes home, wish him a happy birthday for me. I will. Comrade, I've told you over and over and over again. That's the whole story. Let me see those papers again, comrade. Twenty-four back page ads in National Magazine. 200 spot announcements on radio and television. 20 page pamphlet to be mailed to every member of the trade. Very well, comrade. That's all. I just want to say, well, actually, I, I appreciate and approve of your assiduous devotion to party security methods. Good night, comrades. In eventuality, the FBI was able to obtain the much wanted identities of high level communists, and a counter spy returned to the safety and security of his own home. Next week, we'll bring you another story from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick, a 
kind of story that could only be told by a man who for nine fantastic years served as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Thank you.